Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. He's warped. I'm warped. I'm Rick. That's Big Show. Show, what's up? What's happening? Not a whole lot. How was your weekend? Pretty good. You know, I really like all these new spaces that you're doing the show from. You're always on remote. I really like that office. I come visit it someday. Welcome to any time. Although I don't see a slightly warped wing anywhere there. There, there will be. There will be. We're gonna have to right. fix that. We're gonna we're gonna redecorate something crazy. Yeah. And that, it, that and tree it better in not, the background is not doing it for me. And it better not be the one with the padded room, padded walls. That can't <laughs> be my office. Okay. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to give props to Dave Filoni. I wondered how this man was going to put out episode five in theaters and put it out on TV. Was it worthy of movie status? Yes, it was in my mind. I I, I think it was, I'm not going to say the greatest episode of TV on TV. It's not that, but I will say it has been the best Ahsoka episode so far. I concur. I, I think this is, uh, it was the best episode so far. I don't think, you know, whether you watched it in a theater or in the luxury of your own home made a difference. No, it was just more hype with that. Um, I know a lot of you guys, because we come out every episode on Thursdays, by the time you see this, episode six will be out. And I'm going to be the first one to say, I'm not buying in any hype on episode six. I'm not having any, um, any thoughts whatsoever of having the same highs that I got from episode five. If I do, it's a plus, but this way it's not a letdown because I expect them to slow it down to progress the story. So probably be less action. We'll see. I don't know about how much, I mean, there's only going to be what eight, episodes normally that's how much they are so this is going to be there's only three episodes left so i don't know how slow they can make the story go i bet this episode will focus on uh balin and um sabine and whoever balin with, is i forget her name and with uh grant i'm sure we'll see thrawn in this one we should we should because i mean you know let's not do a mandalorian season three i don't want to wait until the final episode to see the villain True I mean, that. They've already talked about season two, so we know that they're going to leave us on a cliffhanger. So I got that. I get, I'm prepared for that. I guess um, for me, did we really know that Luke Skywalker was going to make an appearance in season two of Mandalorian? That no, was kind of like a that, that was, was kind of like a surprise to everybody that watched it, right? Every, it was even your the people that filmed it because they filmed it with another Jedi in his place. Yeah, it was Only like clutch your pearls moment, right? Yeah. It was like, right, so and nobody knew. Everybody knows that Thrawn is going to be in this episode or in this series mm -hmm. sometime. So uh, I, I don't see them wait until the very end to do it because what was the point? You know, you, you're not leaving us with any cliffhanger um, in, in that aspect. The storyline, yes. Now, if um, we get an appearance of Ezra... I think I don't think too many people see that coming. No, but I, I, I'm, I'm, he's in there somewhere. You got to because they've got the little dude in there, his son, that that's going to be a storyline as well. Now, one thing I did read about this um, is Episode Five has now taken the Star Wars universe into a whole new direction because. Not under any circumstance in any movie, uh, any episodes of any TV series that you've seen, cartoon, Clone Wars, any of that, have they gone on to super galactic space? Everything's been within a realm of a particular universe. That's well, true. the whole premise of Thrawn is he's outside their normal universe hiding in plain sight basically so the the fact that they're moving that forward opens up a whole new uh plethora of storylines 
where I equate it kind of like the multiverse in DC and Marvel, you know, where you just there's unlimited storylines that could take place moving forward. And I'm, you know, as a geek nerd, I'm I'm all for it. Now, I will say this. Everybody was rah, rah about Anakin. <sighs> I like the fact that Dave Filoni brought him back in a different way instead of the traditional hey i'm a force ghost let me give you some advice to help you uh move on and it can put her to her final test and yeah and, and it was notice, all three versions if you notice her eyes had that sith glow when she took him down yeah but that was the reflection of his lightsaber that's her eyes didn't say, change but it wouldn't reflect yellow her eyes were yellow no. And, nah. and there's, a, there's a reason yellow and blue that. make green i don't know one there, there's there's a reason behind that everybody has a little darkness in it i mean if you read the um i guess disney doesn't consider them canon but some of the uh star wars novels from old luke had went dark at one point um mace windu taps into the dark side during his sword fighting yeah he's one of the only ones to do that yeah so I think he's the only Jedi to ever use that fighting form. Now, now none of those people that I mentioned have went full over. So I get that. And and I think part of the lesson was, hey, Ahsoka, sometimes you have to be a warrior in order to get through some of the things that are thrown at you. And and, and we didn't think about it this way until that episode. Because if you watch the Clone Wars, yeah, you saw little Ahsoka leading men they were fighting but you never gave it a thought until that episode hey they've got children on the front lines i still didn't look at it like that honestly because she's not just she wasn't just a child yeah uh, granted she was a jedi <laughs> she was she was a jedi prodigy a padawan i mean so i didn't see it's not like you know sending my granddaughter out to fight you know it's a little different <laughs> you know uh I didn't see it like that. Well, and I in your country. And I kind of viewed the whole fight, the whole Anakin thing between her a little differently than you probably. I didn't take it as her welcoming in the dark side or anything. I just took that as, you know, that was just part of it. And but you you make a very valid point when it comes to um, you know, the whole she had to embrace that side just to beat him, so to speak. Yeah, but I'm definitely looking and forward to uh, episode six. She has that rematch against Balin. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree. I'm looking forward to episode six for sure. Yeah, definitely. All right, everybody. what up, Cass? Uh, Yo, Cassie. <laughs> Welcome to the slightly warped pit. I'm in the pit, and I don't have to. Because I don't have to. Sh okay. So, all you kids out there, Cassie's got a story for you. Probably a couple stories. We yeah, want to talk story. about habits. Uh, good habits, bad habits, you know, things that affect us and things that make us who we are. So, Cass, I'm going to give the floor to you. Oh my God. I get the we'll, floor. We'll show we got what's, questions, but you know. What's going on, my boy? Show. What's up, man? Yo. Okay. All right. Well, like I told you yesterday, I said I kind of bad habits and good habits. And I think I'm kind of doing this kind of weird. Um, I had two bad habits that had good habits that turned into good habits that got me off the bad habits. That's the start. So bad habit number one. Um I went through a psychological meltdown starting late 90s into the early to mid 2000s. And you guys, of course, know of my homeboy Rage. Rage developed uh, very easily um, through various traumas. Um, I started changing hairstyles and wearing painted fingernails and started getting angrier and angrier and angrier. Then I started hearing voices, et cetera, et cetera. And the voices kept saying, uh, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die. Every day, all day, 24 hours a day. By this time, show you and I had met. So 
the bad habit of that is that there were a lot of positive things for me that came out of being rage. Um, I'd only been promoted once in my life working, and that was at Oak Tree. Uh, outside of that, every job I've ever had, I've never got promoted. During my rage uh, uh, episodes, uh, I actually got a job promotion. I had more energy. It was, it was more active, more busy. But the bad habit was I was enjoying being raged. I was enjoying being mad. I was enjoying being uh, uh, disrespectful. I was enjoying the rush I was getting from being raged. However, in the back of my mind, I was always trying to think that of a way to get out of this. Um, so I think that was sort of the positive habit because it was constantly on my mind to find a way to get out of this. But the this, the power of rage was so much stronger than that, that it continued on uh, for a long time. Uh, I think I finally started losing him. I had a tattoo uh, of that name on my arm. Uh, the first thought after seeking counseling, another good habit, um, was to cover up things that reminded me. Now, uh, real quick, in that state, rage, what were some of the things that you did that uh, you hated? Um, hindsight being twenty twenty, now, it's funny. But I hated the fact that I actually wanted the battle show. I knew show would beat the shit out of me. But Rage was so nuts that I tried to get him down in his dojo. He wouldn't do it. Uh, he stroked my ego. I vividly remember him saying that he 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 said it in a in a way to make me feel macho, which now hindsight looking back. He was actually telling me I'd beat your ass. Take, take your ass on, on somewhere. He would never do it. Full so I hate that. Nobody ever saw the karate episode. Um, what's your belt degree show? Um, I'm a fifth degree in fifth. Uh, in <laughs> in empty hands, and a fourth degree in Okinawan jiu jitsu. Yeah, I I ain't going up against him either. My <laughs> belt is so white. Um, but it was those type of things. I um uh at the time I was dating his sister-in-law and she had a way of bringing me down when I was about to erupt and it was the simplest thing but it worked. She would stand next to me and she would rub uh my bicep. She would just rub it. And for some way, for some reason, it brought me back. Um, but um, it made me drink more. Um, I think to prevent from trying to hurt other people, I did a lot of pain to myself, especially in my alone times. Um, to get crazy, I mean, I was telling you yesterday about Guerrilla Radio when we were listening to it. To keep the rage within my four walls, I would turn music like that on and I would literally just jump and, and jump and jump and jump and drink, drink and jump and drink. And I've hit myself over the head with glasses. I've hit myself over the head with bottles. I've punched walls. I've done all kinds of shit just to try to keep myself inside the walls and not take it outside. Man. So what was your uh, turning point that made you say, hey, this has got to stop? Turning point, 2005 into 2006, I was um, beginning to hit the streets. Um, I was starting to hang out with the wrong crowd. I wasn't really out with you all uh, anymore. This was after uh, the city shut down the apartment that I was living in over on 87th Street. Um, so I was living in a hotel and, um, I started hanging out with people that were bad. I started drinking daily, which it used to be just for party drinking. I did. Um, I was smoking weed all the time, all the time. 
And um, Debbie came uh, into my life. And um, I was still, I was still up there. But I started noticing I had the kids with me one one Saturday and they were all jumping around and bouncing on one of the two beds I had in the room. And I just looked at them and I was like, son of a bitch. I was going out, man. I was buying throwaways. I, I was I, I it was just crazy. And um, I think the final turning point, this was so long ago, I came here to Jersey and. I went to Debbie's uh, class reunion and it was open bar and um, I was drinking and drinking, of course, crown. And I had happened to just look down on the floor and saw her talking to a guy. And of course it's on the floor and it's music. And so he's in her ear while he's talking to her. Duh. Hindsight. I was pissed. I was pissed. And on the way home, it was snowing at night and everything. We're driving and we started arguing and I put her out of the car. Midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, worst part of town over here. And um, I think I drove about another two or three minutes and I backed up and came back and got her. And from that night forward, I backed off the hard liquor and everything ever again. I was seeking counseling at the time. Um, uh, what else was I doing? My parents are, are pastors, so they were working with me. Um, and I just kept telling myself, I don't want to be this anymore. I'm about to cry. I don't want to be this anymore. I don't want to be this anymore. And um, I just kept going and kept going. And it was nice because you see the Joker right here is where Rage's name was. Mm. So I did that um, my first trip back to Kansas City. I and why did I up. say that's a much, much better tattoo now? Yes. Yes, it is. It is. Hey, so, real quick, before we get back into it, I, I just want to you know let everybody know that's listening, whether you're on a podcast feed or watching on YouTube, mental health is not a joke. It's no. not a game. And whether you or somebody you know has any issues or problems with their mental health, if if you see that or you experience that, either get help or be the help for them. They may not be able to see what they were doing. That Kaz is blessed because he saw what was going on and he put a stop to it. There might be people around us that cannot or will not do that. And it's up to us to be good friends, good family members, and, and at, at least try to help. We may well, not be able to step is, in and turn it around, but we, we got to get in there. Well, with mental health, it's the same as they say uh, with alcoholism and drugs. is the first thing you got to do is admit you have a problem and then work with yourself to want to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Until you do those two things, everything else is just like getting high. You get high, you forget about things for a while, you come back down, all that stuff is still right there. So seek the help, want the help, need the help, and then go get the help. And to be blessed with two of you uh, that I had on top of the other four or five that I have, Man, man, mm. yeah, and, and and I thank Joe every day for not putting a hole in me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I laugh about it now, but I, oh, man. I remember how serious you were back then. <laughs> I, I do remember, but see, the other thing is, I enjoyed the pain. That was part. You did. I used. I had a punching bag downstairs. And I never used gloves. I always went barefisted on it all the time. And I used to get mad because I could never knock it over. I would put everything behind it. It would never get over. And I get angrier and angrier and angrier and angrier. 
I remember about that time frame that you were so angry that you also, I mean, it wasn't necessarily a bad habit, but the, the origination from it maybe was bad was when you were heavy, heavy, heavy into lifting weights. Like you would do that all the time. <laughs> I forgot all every, about that. I mean, every time I came over, you had all of these posters hung up on the wall. Um, you know, inspiration and all that. Obviously, you're a big WWE. Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit yeah. was the poster. And yeah, perfect person to follow mentally, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I went from what when I met you, I was 140, and by the time I got done with with uh, the working out, I was up to 180. Yeah, and you, that was and lifting it, by myself, and that was solid muscle. I mean, you were you were a little, you've always been a little dude, but you was a little brick brick house then. Yeah, mm. I always said, I'm glad you're on my side. I always say I'm glad you were on my side. <laughs> you had crazy on your side. I had talent, skill, and toughness on my side. <laughs> Sometimes a little crazy is all you be. Oh man. So yeah. So that was rage and you no, know, the other bad one was smoking. Mm. Now you talking about cigarettes, weed, what? Cigarette. Well, weed was that little two or three year stint at, um, around 2004, five, and six, maybe when the weed came in. And that one actually stopped. Debbie came down to visit a second time, and there was a piece that came over me the second visit. I took her back to the airport and came back in the apartment and stood there, and it was peace and quiet. And she had vacuums clean. She had cooked all these different meals for me because back then I wasn't eating because of the drugs that the psychiatrist that I had had fucked me up so bad. That was part of my other psychological issues is I had a psychiatrist that every time I had a side effect, he gave me another med. And then I had another side effect and he gave me another med. Yeah, I remember one of them was Trazodone. The other one was Ambien. And I can't remember the rest of them. By the time it was done, I was I was drooling. I couldn't form. Uh, I couldn't form words well. I had to get my face shaved and cut. Nifty used to take me down to Tony's to get my hair shaved because I was always flicking. I was just flicking. I had to self medicate. He would never do anything about it, and I finally figured out what was causing it, and I self medicated myself off of it. So I say I hate that about doctors. They they will mask the pain or whatever the uh, problem is. I mean, it could be something simple like. Me, I got high blood pressure. Oh, take this pill. Okay, now I'm retaining water and my ankles are swelling. Okay, you need this pill to take with it. Yeah. Wait, we're stacking. I don't want to stack. You know, so yeah. I understand completely. Go to your local GNC spot, Rick, and get you some turmeric pills. Turmeric pills. That will handle your blood pressure. I've heard that a couple times before, so. Yeah, my doctor steered me away from that because of my sarcoid. I can't fool with it. Because uh, other people have advised that to me, too. So I had no idea it was nicotine. affected sarcoid. Man, because I have so many varieties of sarcoid, mm -hmm. I I have a doctor for my kidneys. I have a specialist for my kidneys. I have a specialist for my lungs. I got two specialists for my lungs. Um, I've got a neurologist, um, a nephrologist. I mean, I've got so many ologists. And now they found the new one I told you about. Um, uh, I think it's, I'm not even sure which one it was, facial or skin sarcoid now. They found it in the side of my face. So now I've got it up here in the spread, and, and then I have it here now too. They just found that one a month or so ago. So... Ain't you special? Got all them specialists. Yes, I am. And still here. Uh, they found it in 2014, 2015. It's been active since 2012. Not knowing at the time. But it's been active since 2012. They found it in 2014. have been going after it since. Mm -hmm. Positivity, Prince Hong. Have you had your plus sign today? 
That's me every day. There you and go. You are a living example of what positivity can do, what change can do, and what perseverance can do. You've been to the bottom. Now you're going up to the top. And, and you know, we need more and inspiration also, like that. And I also say that your journey allows you to recognize other people's journeys. Man. You know, you I, I know if I told you that, and I'm not gonna go into here because then we'll we'll both be shedding a bunch of tears here. <laughs> but you know, I did tell you just a few months ago how you basically saved my life last year. Mm -hmm. You know, so I will always love you for that, brother. I love both y'all, man. We the the horsemen for life. H. Yeah, we need we need to get the wolf pack on a slightly warped podcast. Yeah. That's going to be difficult for a while with James with Ford. I don't know. We'll I can't remember the last time I talked to James. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll make a way. Um, yeah. Real quick before we shut it down, I, I do want to talk the National Football League. Bum, 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 bum. Um, AFC West, that's our division. You know, fuck them other teams. Except the Saints this year, I want them to do better than Raiders for obvious reasons. Anyway, um, Vegas got put on the asses last week. Deservedly so. I think they were yeah, really they press did. clippings. Yeah, you beat the Broncos by one point, and it was the Broncos. You saw they self-destructed. Uh, who did the Broncos play Sunday? I, Broncos I Washington. Played, yeah. Washington yeah, Commanders. The Commanders, Ooh, a team man. that barely has a name. And then... And and you, you hey. beating the brakes off of them in the first half. Don't don't sleep on the commanders, baby. Oh, no, don't I sleep know, on them. I'm I'm just trying to uh, put salt Eric, in for Denver fans. Eric B. Enemy, he's making a difference, and you can tell with the Chiefs game plan. Yeah, the Chiefs are passing mm -hmm. more, which is an Andy Reid mistake, if you ask me. He did that in Philly, and it cost them in the uh, NFC Championship games. But I, I digress. That's neither here nor there. The Chiefs, however, did pull out a win. Um, the defense showed defense. up. Defense, yeah. So mm. defense. They 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 kept the Jags out of the end zone. Hey, hey I Chargers, was two of three on my point spreads last week. By the way, yes, you were. The Chargers. You know the one I lost, right? Which one? The, the Raiders, Raiders one. Win. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> I, I, when, when they went up twenty-one to seven or whatever it was, I'm like, yeah, this uh, gross. Um, the Chargers were still the Chargers. They managed to lose in spectacular fashion like only the Chargers can. So we'll start with them. That's they a pretty are, good game. They they are going to be at Minnesota. A tale of two hapless teams. Teams with so much potential, but they can't get it together. Who you got, show? Minnesota or the Chargers? Are we just picking outright? Outright. Um, It's at Minnesota? Yes. My gut tells me Los Angeles is going to pull this one out, get their first victory. Yes. Six on one hand, half a dozen on the other. So I'm not sure. So I'm going to go Minnesota since it's at home. And I'm, and, and, and I'm prejudiced to Los Angeles. I hate them too, but I'm going to agree with show on this one. <laughs> They'll finally get a dub. So I'm going with the Chargers. Hold up. I take that back. No, nope, Minnesota's going to win because Eckler's not playing. Eckler's out for the next few weeks. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, I ref I, re I take that back. I'm going Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go Minnesota too. So all three of us on that. Chicago at Kansas City. I'm just going to say Kansas City right now. Let's, let's Casey. Casey. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping this is the game that Casey's offense gets back on track. Um... But yeah, they should win. I, although if you're picking points, I'll do Bears with the points because I think the Chiefs are thirteen and a half point spread or thirteen and a half point favorites, and Ooh, that's high. Mahomes is only thirty percent against the spread, so you have a seventy percent chance of actually winning this if you wanted to bet some money on the game. They were there was an interview I didn't get to look at it that uh, Andy Reid had done something about um, uh, uh, Mahomes is a slow start in the beginning of the season. So 
Well, what it is what... is Andy's not calling him any good plays because he wouldn't pass in them fries and tots in that commercial. Mm, when he still, wouldn't give him his nuggies. Yeah. When he's still drawing mustaches. Hey, uh, Denver at Miami. Can you say ass whooping? I, I don't know if I can it. go with, I don't know if I can go with ass whooping because Miami hasn't whooped anybody's ass yet. They won, yeah. but they didn't. They didn't beat New England's ass. They didn't beat the Chargers' ass. They won. So I could see this being a high-scoring game well, because game Denver has a decent a defense. Game, so I right, that. Denver's defense. Now, where it slacks off is Denver's offense. But you know when. If Sean Payton doesn't pull the reins back off of him like he did against the, against the Commanders, Denver has an opportunity to make some noise here. I'm still, I'm still going, going with Miami, though. I'm, yeah, I'm going with Miami as well. Yeah. yeah we, I we just gotta wouldn't go with say Miami. whoop their ass. Oh, okay. Still, we got to go with Miami because, you know, we got Kaz on and a certain sister of ours would hear that we going with another team. Uh-uh. I'm I stand up for I'll stand up. Y'all pick who y'all want to. I'll stand up to her. I got y'all. I got y'all. I ain't, I ain't scared. She know nope. my number. I ain't gonna answer. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. I'll be headed right out to Kansas after All this right. game. Yep. Sunday night, Pittsburgh at Vegas. This this breaks my heart here because I saw that defense for Pittsburgh uh Monday night. They defense ain't no pump. Yeah, they are. It's it's division game against their division rival. Don't take take all that out of your eyesight. They didn't look that good the week before. No, but again, they played the Niners the week before. They're playing the Raiders this time. Your guys will be fine. Raiders are. I'm picking Raiders to win this game. I'm gonna wait mm. and see if Devonte plays. Without him, I got Pittsburgh. Well, I'd say if De if Devontae does not play, then yes, I would probably say Pittsburgh. Although, I'm not worried about Kenny Pickett. No, no, I'm not worried about their offense. I was only talking about Pittsburgh defense. Right. So your defense should score at least 10 to 14 points just off of turnovers alone. What scares me, though, is Kenny Pickett and their offense might do the same thing because our defense sucks. Yeah, I don't think it, so. This game is going to come down to which teams, which teams you got the least. You guys got molly whopped by Buffalo in Buffalo because Buffalo just got made fun of an entire week because the Jets beat them with their with uh, their Matt backup Rogers, quarterback. Their backup, right? So that's why Buffalo came in there heated. All right, Raiders. You know they didn't stand a shot. This is in Vegas. You guys have more 70 30, y'all win. I hope you're not right. the score 70%. No, I, know, to 30 no, 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 no. <laughs> I want to reiterate don't take that 70 to 30 as a they, score. They win that's game not what 70 I'm saying. He's on I'm, tape. He's I'm on screaming tape. Super Bowl for the rest of the year. It yeah, ain't you gonna can happen. scream Super Bowl, maybe in Madden. <laughs> that's about it. Hey, hey y'all know me in Madden. I can make it happen. You can't see me. <laughs> you talking about Tech Bowl. Bowl. <laughs> oh, yeah. All you got to do is hand off the bow. I was Tecmo good at that. Super Bowl. Hey, <laughs> Cass, it's been wonderful having you on the show. Yes, it has. You. We got yeah, to do man. this again sometime. Doors we'll open. Definitely have to do it again. Doors open. All right. Cass Calhoun, show, take us on out of here. All right. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and uh, always remember, tomorrow's not promise. Love each other. See you next week. Later. Later.